Sate Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sundavadi Pascha Chadi Satadine Jaya Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sri Vasadi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare I'll build you a temple, the Juhu story. <clears throat> Prabhupada left for Calcutta and Mayapur toward the end of February. And on March 11, he proceeded to Vrindavan, accompanied by the devotees who had been in Mayapur for the Mayapur Vrindavan festival. Meanwhile, I was pursuing the no objection certificate with the police. While Prabhupada had been conducting the festival, our architect had received a notice from the commissioner of police dated March 6, denying the no objection certificate on the grounds that the construction of a temple may lead to more traffic congestion, unquote and that, quote, bhajan singing, which had been complained about in the past, is likely to be a nuisance in the future as well. See Appendix A. Srila Prabhupada was furious that the police commissioner had called the kirtan a nuisance, and he talked about it every day. On the morning walks, kirtan a nuisance, and he talked about it, whoops, on the morning walks in his room, in, in even in class. In a lecture on the 16th, he expressed his chagrin and offered a philosophical perspective. Those who are impious sinful, they cannot approach Krishna. Na mam duskutano mudha prapadyante naradama. Those who are naradama, the lowest of mankind, are always engaged in sinful activities and rascals may be very educated, Maya Pratigana, but their education value has been taken away by Maya just like nowadays. It has become that the one that the more one is educated, the more one is atheist. We have received one report just now from Bombay that Hare Krishna singing is a nuisance. You see how degraded the human being has become. Hare Krishna singing is a nuisance. And cinema singing is very good. Just see. They have become simply rascals, dogs and hogs. The next day, he announced his decision to return to Bombay with an assembly of disciples to protest the police commissioner's statement. He wanted all the devotees who had come to India for the festival to converge on Bombay and hold massive protests. Quote, this program should be started immediately, he said. And so the whole day and night, this nuisance will go on. When a friend, Mr. Gupta, suggested how we should assemble the protest, Prabhupada responded, so do it. Don't speak, now organize. Now there is no question of speaking, practical. Everyone should take a leading part, and the Sankirtan nuisance should be started from Bombay. So, Balavanta Prabhu, you are talking? Yes, Balavanta replied. Yes, Prabhupada affirmed. Take selective assistance many sannyasis and do it you take the leaders we shall pollute the whole world with this nuisance the police commissioner has remarked this bhajan is nuisance so we have to agitate there are so many vaishnavas bhajan is nuisance huh it's my life an indian lady said there must be some big agitation to drive away this man Prabhupada continued the demand should be that this man should be immediately removed he has focused a sarcastic remark on a very pure religious system. This movement should be started. He must be removed immediately. We can hold protest marches downtown, Balabantik suggested. Yes, yes. All the Vaishnavas will come with us. Yes, Prabhupada said. You have to organize all the Vaishnavas. In the Bhagavad Gita it says, Satatam Kirti Yantamam, one has to chant Krishna always. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says, Kirtaniya Sadahari, and this rascal saying bhajan is a nuisance. It is not possible to invoke an agitation against this. Is it not? What right has he to say nuisance? 
He should have spoken in sweet language that this bhajan may be very good for the devotees, but it creates disturbance for others. Therefore, we cannot allow. Say like that, but they cannot stop bhajan. That means the whole government is feeling that way, Guru Das says. Otherwise, he would not feel strong in saying it. That is a fact, Prabhupada said. But we have to become strong. That There are many kirtan parties in Bombay. You have to organize them and bring them. Chant Hare Krishna everywhere. Create this nuisance. And Maharashtra is the country of Tukaram. He organized kirtan. The Tukaram kirtan parties are still there. Vitala. Vitala means Krishna. Unquote. Then addressing his disciples based in Vrindavan. He who would stay behind, he instructed, an ideal Goswami should remain here to challenge these false Goswamis. But if you also become false, then you cannot challenge. Prabhupada's on fire. Ooh. Prabhupada addressed the police commissioner's statement as soon as he got to Bombay without waiting for his disciples to join him from Vrindavan. He instructed his foreign disciples in Bombay how they could speak to the local Indians and advise the Indians how they should support the temple. Quote, a disciple has to read an article that Iran wants meat, Prabhupada related. So our government said that all these skinny cows should be killed and the meat should be exported so we can get oil economically, that people should not think of religious sentiment and should be practical and not object. The government wants to open many slaughterhouses and kill these mischief, mischief loitering cows. Their policy is that religion is the op an opiate of the people. They think that religion is just sentiment. Their conclusion is that religion has no value. Therefore, their decision is not to encourage these temples and this bhajan. From their point of view, it is useless. So indirectly and directly, they, want to, they will not patronize this. So under the circumstances, I suggest you make vigorous propaganda, hold open meetings in big halls so that the public may understand at least that this movement is very important. Let there be advertisements that we will speak on different subject matters and then I will come and speak in that meeting. Make a nice gentleman president. Create public opinion so that they will come and sign. Yes, here must be one temple. We will prove from Shastric evidence, as it is stated in Bhagavad Gita, Chatur Vidhabhajante Mam Jana Strukhutanarjana, the word bhajan is used with reference to the to very pious men, sukritina, and the opposite kind of men, duskritina, the miscreant. So bhajan is for the pious man recommended in Bhagavad Gita. And Bhagavad Gita is held in great estimation all over the world. Yet this man has accused bhajan as nuisance. How rascal and ignorant he is. And he is one of the important positions. He is in one of the important positions. This is government. The bhajan is described in the Vedic Shastra as a dealing of the most pious men. And he's talking it is as it as nuisance. So far, as Kirtan, Bhajan Kirtan is concerned, Krishna has said, Satatam Kirtayantamam Yatantasha Dridharata. These are symptoms of Mahatmas. We have to make it clear that Bhajan is so important. Bhagavad Gita is meant for all solution of material problems but the people of India are not accepting it. Why not try to follow the principles of Bhagavad Gita and the easiest process? Satatam kirtayan tomam, always chanting Hare Krishna mantra. My disciples can also speak and say, you please come with us, we are foreigners, but we know Krishna is not for this one or that one. Therefore, we've taken this seriously. So why are you Indians lacking? You come forward, you are all educated youths, gentlemen, accept your culture, we have taken your culture, it's not your or our, but you think that it is your culture, but Krishna is neither for Indians nor for you. He is for everyone, therefore we have taken to Krishna. So why not try this? As stated, Kirtanad eva krishna sya mukta sangha parambajet. Simply, by Krishna kirtan, one becomes free from all contamination. So why not join with us? What is the wrong there? It is stated in your Shastra, and we have adopted it. And we are feeling better. Why are you so callous, you educated youth and gentlemen? This, prop this kind of propaganda has to be made. And let them come at least Sunday and let them give in writing that here the Radhakrishna temple must be there. Take thousands, millions of signatures. Prove that it is not nonsense. It is the most essential thing. 
And so far as traffic is concerned, there is a big road. Make two gates, one in and one out. And there will be no question of traffic and convenience in this way. Make a presentation. That is my suggestion. May I submit a matter? <laughs> Asked a local Indian life member, a lawyer. Prabhupada told them yes. This propaganda and collecting the signatures in the lax will not only take a lot of energy of the devotees, it will take time also by writing the police commissioner to reconsider, we lose nothing. They can always reopen the case and reconsider because the two grounds which they have mentioned, number one, it's a nuisance. It is to be proved, it is to be proved it's a nuisance. Then you have to go, Prabhupada interjected. The public should go. Interested Hindus and Vaishnavas should go to the court and prove that it is not a nuisance. It is essential. There are three things, the man went on. Number one, it is a nuisance. Now, the nuisance is always to be proved. Merely by two or three people, two or five people saying the bhajans and kirtans are a nuisance. People now are drunkards and meat eaters, Prabhupada responded. They may say, and even if they show, that is not authority. Authority is in sh the Shastras. In other words, whether two or five people or two or 500,000 people say Bhajan and Kirtan is a nuisance, they are not authority. Shastra is the authority. But the government, which is so-called secular, no, Prabhupada countered. They may be secular, but they cannot neglect your Shastra. The man's next point was that in regard to traffic, it was again the responsibility of the complainants to show that there would be a problem without any, ju any justification, the man said. Merely one sentence that it would be. And if you read their letter, they have not co committed that certainly it will be a traffic problem. They say maybe. That means the other option is equally open. Maybe not. May not be also. The third is constitutional rights under the Constitution of India. Every person, body, or organization has the liberty and equal right to propagate any religion under the Constitution. I have got a liberty to express my path for any religion. Of course, Krishna consciousness, according to me, is not a religion because it is universal. It's not for any sector. Prabhupada. I'm conducting all these temples with the help of these foreigners, Prabhupada said. There is no Indian that will come in the way. That I've been telling Tamal Krishna also, that you should have some Indians. <clears throat> you should have, Prabhupada retorted, but no Indians are coming. <clears throat> then you should appoint somebody. We cannot appoint, Prabhupada said. That is not possible. Paid man is useless. A point doesn't mean that you pay them. Pointing can also be honorary. Who is coming honorary? Prabhupada questioned. They are honorary, but who else is dedicating? Man, you should have those people in India. I should have means you. If you become that should have, I don't mind becoming, or you can have somebody else. No, Indian is taking seriously. We have been here so many years. How many educated Indian youths have come? They are not interested, man, because in the court of law, you require a person who should be Indian citizen. He should have some Prabhupada. Indian citizens we have got, just like here. He is an Indian man, Prabhupada indicated Yasamati Nandan. But in proportion, they are not even 1%. That is the difficulty. And if the government likes, just like I was refused interest in Africa, Nairobi. So if the government understands that these Americans are making satya graha, as you have proposed, then immediately, within 24 hours, they will be deported. Then, I do not know who will manage my so many establishments. If the Hindus and the Vaishnavas combine together that, quote, this is an important proposal, they go to the court, they give their signatures, they come here, that will be nice. 
It may take a long time. That doesn't matter. It will be a solid thing. And if the government becomes all these Americans are making this propaganda, at any moment they can ask that within 24 hours you get out. Yes, they can throw them out, the man said. No, my intention was not that this movement should be by foreigners because that will be against them. What I was meaning, they should be, that should be taken. Therefore, I'm, I say, hold the meeting. And the Hindus, the Vaishnavas, they should take action, not Americans. There may be Americans, but they'll, the man says, Americans may organize it, but the participants should be Indians. No, organize, Prabhupada said. They have actually come to me. They, but they are attracted with Krishna conscious philosophy. They did not expect that although the money has been paid by them, still the Indian government is against this movement. They were not prepared for all these things. Unfortunately, these things are happening in India. We have no such difficulty in any other part. They are junglies, <laughs> uncivilized, man says, uncivilized. They have become so degraded that a responsible officer in the government, he is saying bhajan is nuisance. You see, he has no knowledge how much spiritually valuable bhajan is in the Bhagavad Gita. Gandhi accepted Bhagavad Gita. It is said, Gandhi was chanting in temple, Raghupati Raghava, what they are following. Gandhi was against drinking and intoxication. Now they're inducing, introducing. This is the position of the government. Therefore, I suggest that according to the word, as far as traffic, we are diverting it this way and that way. Let people come here, join with Bhajan, take prasad and sign. Yes, this mu there must be a temple here and make propaganda that people may come here. F and I am present here. I will speak the same thing as it is going on. Kirtan and speaking from Bhagavad Gita after and after they are convinced, let them sign. Yes, there must be a temple here. In this way, gather public opinion that Bhajan is not nuisance, it is essential, we want it. And the other thing, we are making gates in and out, two gates, submit a plan like that, that there may be a small road, lane, but here's a big road, and purchase that land in front and make a gate. Call a good architect and make a nice gate and road. Take this proposition. Our business is there if we invite people Come, even without temple, people may come and take prasad. And if they give their consent, yes, it is nice. That is sufficient. Even there is no temple. Then, in such a way, a public opinion is created and the sanction is there immediately. There will be temple. It may take some time. It doesn't matter so far as satya graha is concerned. It will be useless. Hungry people, they, may, they are making satya graha. And they are replied with fire, killing them. The government is so rogue that hungry men have come and they are firing. Their swaraj was obtained by nonviolence. And this is the result. Actually, you cannot expect any justice from this government. One has to snatch the justice from them. Yes. Yet even without the temple construction being sanctioned, Prabhupada was prepared to preach on Hare Krishna land. He said, we can request the people. You have tried so many ways, but your problems are not solved. Why not take this simple solution? Come with us, chant Hare Krishna mantra and try to understand a little. One sloka from Bhagavad Gita, what is the difficulty? You have no loss, but if you do it, we assure that you that the solution is there, all solutions. Let us make this propaganda, never mind if they do not give us the sanction forever. It doesn't matter, but this propaganda is wanted. What is a temple? There are many thousands of temples. And let the devotees perform sankirtan and hold meetings in this way, make propaganda. It doesn't matter if the sanction is belated, better late than never. But this propaganda should be done, purchase a hundred chairs 
and place them around the temple so people do not have to stand, so they can sit comfortably with, with their shoes, make some attraction that people may come. And whoever comes, give them prasad, whatever you can. Please take prasad, give him a plate, do in this way, do it in this way. Our life member wanted to pressure the police commissioner to issue the NOC, quote, should we now take help from political parties, such as Shiv Singh, he suggested, that is very good, Prabhupada said, they were the ones who stopped the police and the municipal commissioner from breaking the temple. Yes, but my fear is that as soon as they know the Americans are agitating this, they may say, you go and have no Indians to manage these big temples. Neither are they trained up. I have trained up these American boys. They're doing nicely, but the Indians cannot. These boys have taken brahmachari dress and they will come, they will come with pants and they will argue, why? What is the wrong here? What is the wrong there? Why should I give up pants? Why shall I have tea lock? Why shall I give up smoking? Why? They'll put up so many whys that, that my wife will be spoiled because they have advanced. So many rascal swamis have told them, yes. Boy, Prabhupada's really <laughs> fire. As you rightly say, if we do anything actively, then they may see your boys going out of India, foreigners, Americans, throw them out. They will argue on that ground. And they will say that you are not required, you are a nuisance and whatever that, whenever the reasons. Any reason, no reason, we don't want you. But if that's so, then we may propagate or try to get another place, but they'll take the same action because they know that we are trying to create public opinion against the government. They can take the same action of removing the boys. No, same action, but that is our propaganda, preach. We had been preaching and would continue to preach. Prabhupada was saying we would never stop. Later in his purport to Srimad Bhagavatam 10.322, Prabhupada commented on the police commissioner's statement that Kirtan was a nuisance. And on his own internal mood, quote, some uncivilized men are not in favor of the Krishna consciousness movement. As public officers, they declare without hesitation that the chanting Hare Krishna movement is a nuisance. Although Bhagavad Gita clearly says that according to this verse, it is the duty of the Mahatmas to chant Hare Krishna mantra and to try to spread it all over the world to their best of their ability. Unfortunately, society is such an uncivilized state that there are no so-called Mahatmas who are prepared to. There are so-called Mahatmas who are prepared to kill cows and children and stop Hare Krishna movement. Such uncivilized activities were actually demonstrated in opposition to the Hare Krishna movement's Bombay Center, Hare Krishna land, as Kamsa was not expected to kill the beautiful child of Devaki and Vasudev. The uncivilized society, although unhappy about the, advanced, the advancement of the Krishna consciousness movement, cannot be expected to stop it. Yet, we must face many difficulties in many different ways. Although Krishna cannot be killed, Vasudev, as the father of Krishna, was trembling because of affection, he thought that Kamsa would immediately come and kill his son. Similarly, although the Krishna Consciousness Movement and Krishna are not different and no Asuras can check it, we are afraid that at any moment the Asuras can stop this movement in any part of the world. When the devotees arrived in Bombay from Vrindavan, Prabhupada wanted strong action. On one morning walk, he told us that we should call the members, call the public, and have a sit-in at the police station and refuse to move until the commissioner granted the NOC. 
Balavanta and Amarinda had been getting into po politics in America, running for mayor in Atlanta and Dallas, so Prabhupada deputed them to approach the government leaders in Bombay. Dosan Krishna was to meet the press and other media people in this way. The work was divided up with Tamal Krishna as the main organizer on Prabhupada's behalf. Prabhupada took such a strong position that how could the chanting of Hare Krishna be a nuisance, Balavanta later recalled. How could it be a public nuisance in a state where Tukaram lived? Tukaram was from Maharashtra. And he told everyone to chant the holy names. And Bhakti Minot Thakur said that Tukaram was the father of Lord Chaitanya. So how could anyone say that the chanting of the holy names was a nuisance? Prabhupada sent me to meet with the different political parties, the Jana Sangha and Shiv Sain were the two prominent ones for their sympathy for Hindu causes. There was also the Congress party with whom Mr. Nair had had connections, but the other parties were more Hindu oriented. So that's where we went. I would go to get the politicians to bring them to Prabhupada for an audience and Prabhupada would talk to them about the issue. Prabhupada had told me, quote, you can have anyone you want, anybody in the movement, you tell me, and they will come and work with you. So I picked Vishnu John because the idea was civil disobedience. And when we first discussed it, we were walking in Vrindavan and Prabhupada was telling us what happened. And he said, how can they say chanting the Hare Krishna is, is a nuisance? Rather that stop chanting, we must chant more. And I said, yes, Prabhupada, just like Lochitanya and Chankazi. Exactly, he said. He liked that. Just see this man's intelligence, Prabhupada had comment, commented when he heard Balavanta's proposal. See how intelligent he is. He has understood. So Balavanta recounted, Vishnu John and a number of devotees came to Bombay. Vishnu John would go out in the streets every day chanting, and eventually Prabhupada was victorious. Yeah, with that kind of fire behind it. <laughs> Amarendra was also in Vrindavan, about to leave. I couldn't wait to get back to America after my first time in India, he remembered. All I could think about was goranga potatoes and cauliflower pakoras and <laughs> getting back to America and real food. I was waiting for the bus and all of a sudden somebody came up and said, Prabhupada said that everybody must go to Bombay. Don't return home. We'll change your visas. Prabhupada wanted us to go to Bombay to demonstrate and protest against the government. And Balavanta was there because he had some experience in dealing with politicians. So we took the flight to Bombay. There Prabhupada was in Darshan, furious, saying, <clears throat> in the land of Krishna, they have opposed the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. This was inconceivable. He was on a campaign and he wanted devotees to go out and protest and have kirtan. He sent Vishnu John Swami out to do Harinam every day, and he wanted Balavanta to meet with politicians to overturn the decision. Many Australian, American, European, and African devotees proceeded to Bombay after the Vrindavan festival, and early every morning went on Harinam procession throughout the neighborhood, led by Jutananda Dinanath, Jai Sachi Nandana, Vishnu John, and other expert kirtaniyas. Sometimes they accompanied Prabhupada on his morning walks. <laughs> After a day's chanting, some devotees went to Juhu Beach for a swim in the sea, which Prabhupada said would be good for their health. Vishnu John was wary of sharks and laughed, and he said, Now Krishna will come to me in his form as a shark and say, Here I am. After longer chanting processions, later in the morning, led by Vishnu John Swami, sometimes in downtown Bombay and sometimes in Nearby Santa Cruz or Villa Parle, Kurma Das remembered, the devotees would return for lunch. Once the heat of the day faded, they would sit in the temple and sing bhajans, then go out in the surrounding markets and shopping areas advertising Srila Prabhupada's evening program at the temple. In the night, after arriving in his jeep from the back of Hare Krishna land, Prabhupada would speak on Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4 in the mandap adjoining the temple. After the lecture Balaram Das described, there would be 
an RT ceremony and every one of us danced enthusiastically in front of Srila Prabhupada. Immediately after, Prabhupada would personally distribute the entire plate of Radha Rasa Bihari's Mahaprasad. We'd squeeze and push and shove forward to get a handful of halava and fruit that Prabhupada pressed into our eager hands. Break. Hare Krishna land was situated near a large cinema hall and every evening, both before and after the movie, there were long lines of traffic. The honking horns and hundreds of pedestrians coming and going created a lot of noise and congestion. If the police could allow congestion caused by the cinema, we wondered, why not for the temple? The real problem, real problem Prabhupada said was that the people were not Krishna conscious. To combat this, to make people aware of the value of Krishna consciousness, we should hold festivals throughout Bombay. Then the people themselves would protest the actions of the police commissioner and insist that the government allow the temple to come up. Prabhupada was inspired to both protest and preach, but when the time came for the protest, he adopted a more cautious view. On one morning walk, he returned to the, to the point that we were in a foreign country. If the government didn't like us, if they found us too troublesome, they could just ask us to leave. He quoted the saying, do not pick a fight with a crocodile while in the water. It was not good for us to pick a fight with the Indian leaders while in their jurisdiction. We couldn't win such a fight and it wouldn't be appreciated. He suggested that instead of having a demonstration throughout the streets and ending at the police station, we should hold massive kirtan programs and preach so that the people of Bombay would become convinced of the value of Krishna consciousness, that Krishna consciousness was the only hope of saving the world. Then he said, when the people of Bombay are convinced of the importance of Krishna consciousness, they will see that the temple is built. So, even though Prabhupada modified his position on the protests, he still wanted us to remain active. Bhagavan, Bhagavata, Bhagavata, was given the responsibility of speaking with ministers. Should Balavan, right? Balavanta. It says Bhagavata wow. no. instead of ba Balavanta. Anyway, was given the responsibility of speaking with ministers about our Prasad program. We were getting food from America to distribute to the people, he recalled. And I spoke with different government officials to, to arrange for permits. I also collected donations of food and money for Prasad distribution to the public every day. I went all the way downtown on the train and then came back all the way. In the evening, Prabhupada would await my report. What is the news today? I would say I collected 1,500 rupees from this man and sacks of grain from that person. He would say, very good. He was pleased to see any progress. <coughs> He would also ask me about the ministers I had spoken with. One day I had spoken with the chief minister of the state of Maharashtra. Prabhupada was pleased to beam. Here, his American disciples were speaking with the highest government officials and arranging for so many things. He appreciated how resourceful, adamant, and tenacious we were about serving our spiritual master. He would praise me for my accomplishments, and I always felt good. I was doing my spiritual master's work. That doesn't sound like Balavanta, somebody else. We also began to organize preaching programs, but most of the devotees who came from Vrindavan would be back at the temple during the day. Prabhupada was concerned about how the devotees would be engaged, and he asked his managers what the devotees would do. He, we replied that we would have a program in the temple all day long, alternating reading, kirtan, the discussions about Krishna consciousness. Very good, he approved. After a few days, Prabhupada asked how the program in the temple was going, whether devotees were enjoying chanting and reading and hearing. Well, frankly, Srila Prabhupada, Tamal had to, had to tell him, most of the devotees aren't coming, and the ones who do come, most of them fall asleep. All right, Prabhupada replied, if they are sudras, let them work in the garden, but everyone must be engaged. You tell the devotees that if they're actually Brahmins, they should sit in the temple and be engaged in kirtan and Krishna katha. And if they aren't Brahmins, if they are not Brahmins, then they are Sudras and they can work in the garden. But nobody can remain idle. Nobody can sleep. Vishnu John was in charge of the temple program. In spite of Prabhupada's words, 
the devotees didn't come or work in the garden. One day Vishnu John told them, Prabhupada is not pleased that we are so lazy. We should be doing something. He says that if you just sit around, you'll get sick. After two weeks, the Australian devotees became restless and asked me to approach Prabhupada on their behalf. There was little engagement for them in Bombay, they said, and they would have a lot of work to prepare for Prabhupada's imminent visit to their country. When I passed along their request to leave, Prabhupada had me deliver them a stern reply. What is the question of no engagement? There are so many opportunities to read and chant. Don't be impatient wanting to go here and there. So the Australian devotees resigned themselves to another week in Bombay. <laughs> With all the difficulties and challenges, I had a gnawing feeling that I was failing Srila Prabhupada, that he was displeased with me, and I approached Satsarupa, my first temple president and senior godbrother, who was now Prabhupada's secretary with my concern. He replied that he had never heard Prabhupada speak about me in negative terms. The only thing he had heard him say is, Giriraj has too much to do. Break. Eventually, Prabhupada drafted a letter to the police commissioner. He wrote that the Bhagavad Gita, which was accepted by every Hindu, recommended Satyatam Kirti and Tamam, and there should always be kirtan, but that some people, he didn't mention the commissioner directly, considered kirtan to be a nuisance. Who were these people? He again quoted the Gita, Namam Duskrachana Mutha. That fools and rascals don't surrender to Krishna and didn't like Krishna kirtan. He told the commissioner that he was in the position of a king, addressed him, as in the ideal, addressing him in the ideal and asking him to give us protection from such people. He wrote that traditionally the administrators and the government would give protection to the innocent citizens from such fools and rascals. So we were appealing to him as humble devotees to please give us protection and allow the Kiritan to go on in the temple and grant the NOC. He had us sign the letter and deliver it to the police commissioner office. When, after some days, there was no response, he asked us to again go. The commissioner was not available, but we met his secretary. Did you give the letter to the commissioner, we inquired? Yes, he said. The commissioner said it was the best, most brilliant letter he had ever received. He was so impressed. He said he had never received a letter like this before, but he didn't give the NOC because he was involved in a conspiracy. Whatever happened, Srila Prabhupada always remained fixed in Krishna consciousness with full faith in a spiritual master in Krishna as he wrote to Pranava, Pranava Das on May, March 30. In Bombay, we're meeting the, meeting the opposition peacefully and I hope things will come out successfully. Break. Although some devotees found that Dr. Patel could be annoying, I appreciated the service he did for us and I liked the discussions with Srila Prabhupada. He knew some Sanskrit and he liked to and analyze different verses with Srila Prabhupada. One day he brought up the verse. Yatak Pravatir Bhutanam Yena Sarva Midam Tatam Sva Karmanatam Abhyarcha Siddhim Vid Vindati Manava. By worship of the Lord, who is the source of all beings and who is all pervading, a man can attain perfection through performing his own work. I wanted a little exposition on this, he said. Sva Karmana Tam Abhyarcha. Yes, Prabhupada replied, Sva Karmana. The karma of a man depends on his position in society. Yes, Prabhupada agreed whether he's a Chhatri Vaishya or Shudra like me, and whether he's a Sannyasi or Grahastha on that karma. And when he does that karma without expectation of any fruit, that karma is as good as bhakti, according to this line, Svakarmana tam abhyarcha siddhim vindati manavaha. No, Prabhupada said. 
the result should be there, but tum unto Krishna. Give the result to Krishna, not self. You earn lakhs of rupees, but tum abhyarcha, give it to Krishna. Not take it yourself to distribute it among your children. Tum abhyarcha, that is service. First of all, understand this word tum. Sva karmana tam abhyarcha karmana. Yes. How can you object to the karma? That is what I want to know. Karma, karmana, by your work, Prabhupada said, just like you're working as a medical practitioner. So you earn lakhs of rupees. Give to Krishna. That is tam abhyarcha. Then you become perfect. That is also confirmed in the Bhagavata. Atak Pumbir, Dvijasreshta, Varnashram, Vibhagasya. Everyone is working according to Varna and Ashram. So, Svanus Tatasya Dharma, anyone who is serving according to his Dharma, an engineer, doctor, somebody else, he is serving according to his occupational duty. But he has to see Svakarmana Tam Abhyarcha Siddhim. Some said him labhate. That is Gita. And it is said, Svanus Tatasya Dharma some said he. Perfection. What is that? Hari Toshanam. We have to see whether Krishna is satisfied. You are in lakhs of rupees. You give it to Krishna. Krishna said, Yet Karoshi, never mind what you're doing. Kurashva Tad. Madarpanam, give it to me. And, no, 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 sir. I'm serving you, but the money is in my pocket. Everything is Krishna's. How can you give anything, even a leaf? Oh, yes, yes. Just like these boys and girls are giving. That is the philosophy. These boys and girls are giving everything, whole life. They do not ask even a single paisa from me. That, my dear sir... Please give me four annas. I'll go to the cinema. You see? They are serving. They have given everything. This boy, you like this Giriraj. He's earning at least 50000 per month. He does not keep a single paisa. This is service. They're not poor. They're earning. But everything for Krishna. Giriraj, Dr. Patel, asked, How are you earning 50,000 rupees a month? Because 50 members, Prabhupada answered for me, 50 members, 1,100 rupees. He makes at least two or three members per day. Some days he is absent, so average 50,000. Not a single 50 paisa coin does he keep. There are many, all of them. Not that everyone is earning 50,000, but even 50, 100 or 50 pice everything for Krishna. That is Tam Abhyarcha. And if you divide partially, quote, some percentage for Krishna, some percentage for my sense gratification, then Krishna says, Yayatam Mam Prapadyante Tangs to Daiva Bajamiham proportionately. If you have spent cent percent of your energy for Krishna, Krishna is cent percent for you. And if you have spent 1% for Krishna, Krishna is 1% for you. Responsive cooperation. Responsive cooperation. An Indian man repeated, which was greeted by laughter, because it was a term that had been used in the Indian freedom movement. I didn't know that one. Responsive cooperation. This institution has advanced so much all over the world, Prabhupada continued, because we have got these boys who have dedicated everything for Krishna. Therefore, it has advanced so quickly. They do not think of anything as personal. Swakarmana tam abhyarcha. Some sit here. Hari toshanam. Even though we did not think we were on the platform Prabhupada described when he used it to illustrate a point, we could not discount what he said. And we felt inspired to come to that standard. 
Though he often spoke like an impersonalist, Dr. Patel considered himself to be a Vaishnav. And when Prabhupada would call him a Mayavadi, he would object, No, sir, I'm a Vaishnav. And this way he was a Mayavadi. In a way, he was a Mayavadi. He accepted Krishna and the Bhagavad Gita, but it wasn't quite clear how he accepted Krishna as the person, Krishna, <coughs> or something impersonal speaking through Krishna. His position was a little, always a little ambiguous. And the way he spoke, it was hard to fight, figure him out. But he would always insist that he was not only a Vaishnav, but a pure Vaishnav. During one of their walks together, Prabhupada criticized one of the revered so-called spiritual leaders of India, and Dr. Patel became livid. He was so angry and he was shaking. You cannot criticize like this. He shouted. I'm not saying Krishna is saying. Prabhupada shouted back. Na mam duskritana mudha. And like that, they were shouting back and forth. This time, Dr. Patel's friend, he led a group of cronies, perhaps because he was a little intellectual and outspoken, tried to drag him away, saying, Swamiji has a heart condition, don't upset him. But Dr. Patel persisted. He was shouting at, Prabh at Prabhupada, and Prabhupada was shouting back. In the end, Dr. Patel's cronies pulled him away. Later at the temple, Tuan Krishna said, asked Prabhupada, why, did, why do you do that? Why do you put up with him? He is so offensive. It is our duty to engage everyone, Prabhupada said. But what is his actual position, Tamal Krishna asked. Is he a Vaishnav? Is he a Mayavadi? What is he? In response, Prabhupada told the story about a man who could speak many languages, and whatever language people addressed him, he would respond fluently. No one could figure out whether the man was actually, where the ex man was actually from. After much discussion, a neighbor said, I will find out. And one day, when the man was preoccupied, the neighbor came up behind him and gave him a big whack. And when the man started to curse in his native tongue, his origin was disclosed. <laughs> Prabhupada. Amazing. Dr. Patel was like that. Prabhupada said, he can speak very expertly. He can sound like a devotee. He can he sound like a Vaishnav, sound like a Mayavadi, sound like anything. But when he gave him a slap where it really hurt the so-called saintly person that he revered, his real language came out. Thereafter, Prabhupada restricted talks during his walks. Now, no more discussion. We'll only read Krishna book. And for the first time in years, Dr. Patel avoided him. Then one day, Dr. Patel was walking on one side of the beach and Prabhupada was walking on the other side and something made Dr. Patel change course. He just walked up to Srila Prabhupada and bowed at his feet. He came back. We have an assembly, he told Prabhupada, and they passed by majority vote that I should refrain from coming here. But somehow or other, I came. Prabhupada reciprocated graciously and with humor. I saw your motor car and offered my obeisances. I was thinking that Dr. Patel's representative, the car is here. <laughs> then Dr. Patel came to the point, Swamiji, we have been taught to respect all saints of India. And our business, Prabhupada replied, is to point out who is not a saint. <laughs> On another morning walk, Dr. Patel brought up the topic of 12 sets of bedding he had been given, he had given to the devotees complaining to Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada that we hadn't taken care of them. At first there were 12 sets. Then after a while there was one less blanket and fewer pillows. In time there were only about seven sets, then three sets, and finally there was nothing left of the gift at all. So Dr. Patel complained 
that he had gone and begged and organized a gift and now there was nothing left, not a trace, not a thread. The Prophet responded, these boys and girls from Europe and America who have come to serve me, they don't care for their bodies. They know I am not this body, so why should I care? As long as they can serve their spiritual master in Shantara Krishna, they are happy. They don't mind if they have to sleep on the floor or get bitten by mosquitoes. They are detached from the body. All they care about is devotional service. They are already liberated, he said. That moksha you so much want, that moksha they already have. That is why there is nothing left of your gift. They don't care for the body or the comforts of the body. They are liberated, which you so much want to become. Prabhupada's answer was profound, expressed with a wry twist. It was true. Devotees were liberated. Pure devotional service began at the liberated platform, Brahma Bhutta, Prasadatma, etc. Even a neophyte devotee was beyond a mayavadi who desired liberation. So, in a subtle, tactful way, this time, Srila Prabhupada put Dr. Patel in his place and exalted the devotees in comparison. Still, even liberated devotees sometimes took care of the so-called material possessions, knowing them to be Krishna's property to be used in Krishna's service. The highest conception of renunciation or detachment was Yukta Vairagya, defined by Srila Rupa Goswami, Anasaktasya Vishayan Yatarhan Upyun Jitaha, Near Bandha Krishna Sambande Yuktam Vairagya Uchate. Things should be accepted for the Lord's service and not for one's personal sense gratification if one accepts something without attachment and accepts it because it is related to Krishna, one's renunciation is Yukta Vairagya, befitting renunciation. Srila Prabhupada himself perfectly demonstrated the principle of Yukta Vairagya. He carefully maintained whatever Krishna sent him, and he engaged not only anything and everything, but also everyone in Krishna's service, including Dr. Patel. We're almost, we have three pages left, two and a half. Around this time, the <coughs> Illustrated Weekly of India carried an article about by Age Han Ageha Nanda. Is that how you pronounce it? Ageha Nanda. Ageha Nanda. Bharati. An Austra Austrian born Indologist and Advaitin Sannyasi under the title Hare Krishna versus Shiva Shiva. In the article, Bharati gave his version of a series of exchanges and debates he had with Swami Hridayananda of ISKCON. I shared my impression with Prabhupada that, his, that the weekly's editor, Kushwant Singh, had run the piece along with the title to make us all, believers in general, look silly, bickering over deities and evidence. Prabhupada agreed with my assessment. Yes, he said, Bharati is a fool, but Singh is a demon. Hmm. On March 26th, Amratlao Pandya, our old friend and life member from Vile Parli, brought two sadhus from Swami Narayan Temple. Oh, this is really a guess in Dadar to meet Srila Prabhupada. Swami Narayan followers considered themselves to be a Vaishnava sect, but generally instead of worshipping Krishna, they worshipped only Swami Narayan, known also as Sahajanand Swami, who was the original guru and who lived from 1781 till 1830. The sect was popular, mainly with Gujaratis, and their principles of conduct were similar to ISKCON's. In fact, on one morning walk, Dr. Patel had brought up Shikshapatri, 
had brought the Shiksha Patri written by Swami Narayan and read excerpts to Prabhupada and Prabhupada had approved of most of them. Prabhupada was in his room talking to Jasavati Nandan Das and his 70-year-old mother when Mr. Pandya brought the monks up to see him. When the door opened, the sannyasis saw her. They became disturbed and covered their faces. In their sect, brahmacharis and sannyasis never looked or spoke to a woman. In their temples, the women listened from the other side of a curtain. Bhagavata, this is another same person, whoever that is, Bhagavata. Bhagavata also brought the monks upstairs. Let's wait, he told them. Prabhupada will finish soon and then you can go in. So they went back down and waited. When Yasamati Nandan and his mother had left and the monks went in to see Prabhupada, he treated them with respect. I'm so sorry, he said. But one of my leading students, elderly mother, came to see me. I saw her while her son was present in the room. My sannyasi servant was also here. Oh, we do not see a woman under any circumstances, they said. Yes, I understand, he replied. Lord Chaitanya was also very strict. The monks told Prabhupada that if any of them saw the face of a woman, he was considered to be fallen. Well, I speak to women, Prabhupada said. Does that mean I'm fallen? They didn't reply. Then he brought up a question of why the sect worships Swami Narayan and not Krishna. We believe that you can worship the guru on the same level as God, the monks replied. Just like you are worshiping Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, so we are worshiping Swami Narayan. Yes, Prabhupada told them, we do worship the Guru on the same level as God, but with God. We worship Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with Radha and Krishna. So if you worship Swami Narayan with Radha and Krishna, that worship would be proper, otherwise not. That began the confrontation. They said that Swami Narayan was God. Where in Srimad Bhagavatam does it say Swami Narayan is God? Prabhupada questioned. I have not seen. I have seen Rama, Nishringa, Varaha, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentioned in the Bhagavatam. But where is Swami Narayan? It is in this book, they replied. Who has written that book? Is it the Vedas? Is it written by Vyas? No, they said. It, such and such Swami wrote it. Oh, that Swami? Who is he? What parampara is he from? Prabhupada was going on hammering. Bhagavata later remembered he wouldn't let them go. They didn't understand the philosophy and Prabhupada smashed them to pieces. Okay, we're going to leave Swamiji, one of the monks said. We've had enough and they walked out. The next morning on his walk, Srila Prabhupada brought up the question of how to regard and deal with women. Why should one hate women so much? He asked Dr. Patel. We don't hate, Dr. Patel replied. We want to protect you from sex. Not to see the face, not to. Because woman is the embodiment of Maya. You should be trained up that in spite of woman, you'll not be agitated, Prabhupada said. That training is required. Now that training is very difficult to get, I'm sorry to say. No, no, the training is there. <clears throat> we are training in that way. You must have a sort of a between the objects and the indriyas, the senses. According to Swami Narayan's principles, I am fallen. No, 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 sir. Dr. Patel objected because I'm always surrounded by young girls. No, no. Swami Narayan was sitting with women. But the sadhus, men should be trained up in such a way that in spite of women, they will not be agitated in European countries. If you restrict that way, it will be fanaticism. Nowadays, here also, that is not possible. It is simply utopian. 
That is all right. It is not possible. So you are doing like this. We are training, Prabhupada stated. That is the training of Chanakya Pandit. Matravat Paradeyu Shu. There may be thousands of women, but you see them as your mother. That's it. Become agitated by seeing your mother. Then what can be done? To avoid that trap, they avoid association with women. But these women, my disciples, they are not ordinary women. They are preachers. They are Vaishnavas. By their association, one becomes a Vaishnav. Prabhupada Kijai. Okay. One hour. Laying foundations. They still didn't get their no objection certificate. Coming attractions, I guess.